As we know, laws in Myanmar are still vague and uncertain despite progress made in the legal environment, but many are still optimistic about the abundant business opportunities the country has to offer. These are the views of participants at Channel News Asia's Business Insight Seminar held in Yangon today. The event is part of the channel's official launch of our Yangon Bureau. And joining me now is uh, Channel News Asia and Primetime Asia's Glenda Chong, who is live from the Sedona Hotel in Yangon. Glenda. Hi, Tim. Well, you know, um, international companies who want to invest in Myanmar, they must have an appetite um, for risk because for risk because they have to remember that uh, Myanmar is not only going through an economic development, but it's also going through uh, political development. And our Myanmar correspondent, Mei Wong, now she'll tell us how Channel News Asia will help companies um, navigate the complexities of this blossoming nation. Congratulations to Channel News Asia in Yangon. Launching Channel News Asia's 13th Bureau in Yangon, this office joins others in cities like Jakarta, Shanghai and Tokyo. And, and the Business Insight Seminar at the launch highlighted the progress and challenges of Myanmar's reform process. One challenging sector, the country's legal framework. These laws are somewhat contradictory sometimes to some of the other laws, the, the older laws. Um, uh, the, the newer laws are also somewhat vague. Uh, and then you have practice as well. Many of the ministries aren't necessarily familiar with the details of these new laws and, and how to implement them. So international firms keen on entering the Myanmar market should have a high appetite for risk. Obviously, we are very mindful that we cannot be over-optimistic and we are very mindful that there, sh there will be many bumps on the road. Uh, it is important to, for, for us, it is very important to understand that um, there's a very good intention by the government to really provide long-term reform that are sustainable. We are trying to open up the economy, provide a level playing field for international as well as local companies, but at the same time maintain a local identity, maintain a local economy so that the local companies can grow uh, and participate in this growth. This forum allowed participants to discuss as well as to share views on the changing business environment here in Myanmar. Many are in agreement that there are still gaps to be plugged, such as the need to improve human capacity, as well as beefing up the rules and regulations governing the corporations in this country. But many are also of the view that the government is well aware of these gaps and are committed to plug them with resolve. The Myanmar government is also determined to improve the media landscape. It hopes that international news agencies such as Channel News Asia can contribute to the industry's development. You can share your experience, you can share your knowledge, you can share your professionalism with our local journalists. And also you can cover the success and challenges of our reform process in the uh, fair and balanced manner. And also you can help international community to understand the complexity of social, political, and economic reform in our country. Channel News Asia, which hope to create the voice for Asia, can cover the Myanmar news with the ASEAN perspective. This is the more important in the, during the time of the Myanmar ASEAN chairmanship. With its base in Myanmar, Channel News Asia aims to document the growth of this country. To be frank, covering Myanmar over the last decade has been far from easy. We strove to do so because we believe that Myanmar is an important part of Asia and of the world. Our new bureau will allow us to do primary reporting daily of what is happening here in Myanmar. The channel aims to improve its content and reach beyond the current 200,000 households in Myanmar. Mei Wong, Channel News Asia, Yangon. And joining me, I have two guests. I have Mr. Simon Tay, and he's chairman of the Singapore Institute of International Affairs, and Mr. Alisha Ali, and he's um, also chairman of uh, Silk Road Ventures to help us understand a little bit about uh, Myanmar as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. You know, there is um, a lot of economic growth. It is booming here in uh, Myanmar, but there are also some internal changes that need to be made. You know, um, So what are some of these internal changes, and what happens if it's uh, 
uh, neglected. How will it uh, affect uh, Myanmar's uh, development and growth? Um, Mr. Alisha, why don't I start with you? Yes, well, obviously, for foreign investors, who uh, Myanmar represents a unique opportunity. You, there are a lot of co economies in Asia. However, most of these economies already are, you know, saturated and mature markets. And this is a, a virgin land, a country with 60 million people, uh, uh, between, located between India and China. So therefore, it is, is a, a country of massive potential. However, foreign investors clearly uh, will be uh, more confident in investing if there is a rule of law, there is a, you know, a, a, a quite a, um, Advanced uh, legislation, so that you know they understand, because a lot of these investments in oil and gas and infrastructure and power requires billions of dollars investment. So therefore, for Myanmar government, I think has done already a terrific job in introducing uh, a raft of legis uh, legislation measures. But I, nevertheless, we, we uh, believe that uh, the, there has to be more work to be done in order to uh, create. A conducive environment to attracting multi-billion dollar investments in the country. I think some examples are really show what uh, Ali meant, that really there has been the overall um, attractiveness of, of, of Myanmar and the overall legislation, but the details do matter. So for example, the government has now signed an international treaty that allows arbitration and arbitration awards to be recognized in the country. Uh, well, what has done at international level, the national regulations have yet to be finished. This is in the pipeline, but un until that step and other similar detailed regulations come out, some people will feel a bit nervous about putting too much money on the table. Right. Okay. Um, what about um, attracting investments? Because right now everybody wants to come um, to Myanmar. It's you know quite the darling. But how do you ensure that one actually gets responsible investors and investments here? What are these um, responsible investors' investments that you know we're looking out for? Uh, it, it is a, c a crucial matter. I mean, the government uh, and the opposition have a leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, as, as she speech, in her speeches, she does emphasize that the Myanmar are looking for their responsible investments. And uh, if you look at the who are at the, at the, the forefront of investments here in, in Myanmar. These are U.S. companies, Japanese companies, uh, European companies. And therefore, uh, we're quite confident that uh, those companies that are looking at investing here, GE of the world, Toyota, uh, Mitsui, these, 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 company, these types of blue chip investors mm. that mm. the Myanmar needs to attract. And these investors have a multi-decade experience investing in frontier markets. And, and particularly with the scrutiny that uh, international investors are now are account, encountering, uh, encounter in their investments in the frontier and emerging markets, the responsible investments, uh, social responsibility, mm -hmm. is at the top of the agenda of foreign investors. Right. Well, um, Simon, you know, Myanmar's um, narrative um, in the past, it has been dominated by a uh, certain perspective. You know, we know that Myanmar is a complex story with several issues to cover. How do you think global media should um, now approach such a complex and fluid nation? Well, I think the challenge has been kind of a pendulum shift. One time a pariah state with every possible accusation uh, held, hurled against this country. Now I think we've gone into this kind of honeymoon phase where yeah, the government has done the right thing and due, due credit must be given to them. But this uh, perhaps overly golden view is bound to be difficult to sustain in the long term. We need to mesh it with reality. We need to be monitoring the precise regulations, the precise steps that these companies take. Are they going to be really green? For example, some Chinese companies which were accused earlier of you know, all kinds of environment problems are now reaching out to environment NGOs. And whether it's to help green them or to greenwash them, appear to be green, mm. that's to be seen. So as, as the attention comes to Myanmar, I think people will really start to see it's a strategic important country. It's another developing country story. It's not better than Vietnam was 15 years ago, but by, by, by no means is it something to be forgotten about. Right. Okay. Speaking of that, you know, um, virgin country, golden country, how do you ensure that Myanmar juggles um, modernity with preservation and not just preservation of heritage here? We're also talking about socially, we're talking about architecturally, and we're also, you know, talking about culturally here. 
it's a challenging issue. I mean, modernization and then and at the same seeking and aspiring to have a modern economy uh, where manufacturing plays an important role, where you have uh, sophisticated industries. At the same time, preserving the the cultural identity, preserving the national craft is, is a tough. Uh, well, I think that uh, Myanmar has several good fronts. Clearly, Myanmar is a very nationalistic country. They have a proud civilization, and they can also start to see the opportunities that arise from it. Some people might actually go to Pagan over the weekend, for example. And there, they can see the potential for tourism. Uh, they don't really want to be flattened out and become another homogenized you know, industrial space. Uh, they, they'll be big enough countries. It's, it's like France and the UK combined, virtually. Big enough countries, you can have both. And I think that uh, here in Yangon, things will be tighter. But I'm very happy to see already the start of a heritage movement mm. that has won quite, quite a lot of momentum in the short time we've been here. So if it's um, to preserve as well. Thank you very much for joining me here on Primetime Asia. My guest, Simon Tay, Chairman of Singapore Institute of International Affairs, and Mr. Alisha Ali, Chairman of Silk Road Ventures. Tim? All right, Glenda, thank you very much for that. That's Glenda Chong there, live with us in uh, Yangon. Let's have a quick